Hello, I'm Cassandra Wirtz. I'm an internal medicine physician here at First Primary Care. I'm also a board certified obesity medicine physician. And today we're gonna to be talking about diabetes. And what is diabetes? Diabetes is a condition where either the body doesn't make enough insulin or where the body tissues don't use the insulin well enough. And insulin is the hormone that controls the blood sugar level, so the blood sugar becomes very high. There's three main types of diabetes. There's type one diabetes, which is an autoimmune condition, and that usually is treated with insulin. Um, there's type two diabetes, which is 90% of diabetes, and that usually is more of an insulin resistance where the body does not use insulin well. Um, the, the tissues cannot use the insulin well. Uh, and then there's some time during her pregnancy. It might go away after pregnancy, but the woman remains at risk for diabetes after the pregnancy. Diabetes is a really common condition. More than, more than 30 million people in the United States have diabetes, and that's almost 10% of our population. More worrisome is that 7 million people are walking around with diabetes and don't have any idea that they have it. So it's important that we think about it and that we screen for it. Um, everybody over 45 should be screened for it. Women that had gestational diabetes should be screened. Um, both these groups of people should be screened every three years. But anybody who's higher risk for diabetes, so if you have a family history, if you have overweight or obese, if you have hypertension, if you have cholesterol problems, if you have heart disease, um, women with polycystic ovarian syndrome should be screened more often. If somebody's been diagnosed with prediabetes or elevated blood sugars, not quite to the tune of diabetes, those people should definitely be screened more often, maybe every year. Diabetes is one of those things that is kind of a silent, quiet, creepy little disease where you walk around thinking that you feel fine, you got no clue that it's there, but it's doing damage to the body. Um, you know, even the eye disease that comes along with diabetes, a lot of people, 10, 20%, already have eye disease by the time that they're diagnosed, which suggests that that diabetes was there for a good five, seven years. So it's one of those things that we need to be mindful of. We need to be looking for so that we find it before there's bigger, bigger disease, bigger damage. Most of the time, people are diagnosed based on routine labs um, that are just done for a routine physical or done for some other reason. Um, people don't usually have symptoms at the time of diagnosis, or they might only realize they have symptoms when we start talking about the diagnosis. Uh, but the symptoms of diabetes, uh, which happen when the sugars are really quite high, are increased urination, increased thirst, blurry vision, uh, fatigue, uh, but again those only happen when the sugars are really quite high. How is diabetes diagnosed? For somebody who's asymptomatic, we look at the fasting blood sugar, which means you haven't eaten for eight hours and we check your blood sugar. If it's over 126, that's diagnostic of diabetes. Or we check an A1C, which gives us a three month average of your blood sugar. And if it's over 6.5, that's diagnostic of diabetes. If somebody has those classic symptoms of diabetes, then if a random blood sugar taken at any time point, fasting, non-fasting, is over 200, then it's diagnostic of diabetes. How is diabetes treated? So the mainstay of treatment and where we'll go the furthest, whether or not we end up with medications, are the lifestyle changes. It's really what we need to focus on. So changing the way that we eat, um, people will really, really simplify this and say, don't eat sugar, uh, but there's so much more to the diet of diabetes than not eating sugar. Um, and then people will go a little further and say, just cut carbs, but it's, it's way more than that too. Um, so really, I feel like there could be a whole video in and of itself of the diet of diabetes, but uh, cutting sugars, cutting carbs, changing the balance of how you eat, trying to move more toward a plant-based diet, which is something that a lot of people are a little bit not happy to hear, but working on it over time, a work in progress. Activity, of course, is really important and becoming more active, uh, working on resistance training, building up some of that lean body mass so that your tissues, your muscles can use the insulin, the, the sugar better. That makes a huge difference. Weight loss will go really far to helping improve your blood sugars. Um, that will make a very big difference too, of course. Um, so those are things to work on over time. We don't see those changes really quickly, of course. Medications might, might be something that we have to think about. 
And we have lots of options. We have pills, we have injectables that are not insulin, and we have insulin. Um, we have really good medicines these days. They have more, than, more benefits than just controlling your blood sugar. They might help uh, decrease changes in your kidney function over time. They might help with your weight. They might help um, decrease your cardiovascular risk. So, you know, at least you get more bang for your buck, you know, two, bir two birds, one stone kind of thing. Um, but it's a lot to think about. And so all these things, of course, are overwhelming, right? So, you know, just having good conversations about the risks and the benefits of medicines and just the idea of trying to get the blood sugars down to goal so we can decrease the risks of the bad things of diabetes happening. Follow up with diabetes. You know, some of it is things that you can do at home as far as just checking your blood sugar with a glucometer where you poke your finger and see what your numbers are. There are uh, continuous blood glucose monitors that you can attach to the back of your arm that can give you blood glucose uh, measurements continuously. You have a little phone or a little uh, reader that you can check and get uh, measurements whenever you want that really give you a lot of feedback and help you learn a lot about how what you eat affects your blood sugar. Um, those are a really good tool. Uh, and then we have the A1C, that, that three-month average lab test that we can follow and check and see how you're doing. Uh, and then we have follow-up visits to kind of talk and see where you're at. The advantage of our model is that we can follow a little more closely than typical models are able to do. You know, in the typical model, you'd get your diagnosis, you'd leave, and then it'd be, hey, see you in a few months probably. Uh, with our model, we have an app where we can communicate closely and easily with each other. And the thing that I worry the most with my patients when somebody gets a new diagnosis is, here's all of this thrown at you and all of this information, and it's, it's overwhelming to start with, and a lot of it's confusing. And how much did that patient take in? How much were they able to take in? And, and a lot of times I ask, you know, 10 times, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? And usually they say no. And I'm sure when they leave, the questions hit, right? And so with that app, it's very easy for them to send a question back. The other is if we're gonna start a medication, I like to be able to check in very quickly to say, hey, are you having any issues with that medicine? Are you having any side effects? You know, even before we can expect any benefits, are you having any side effects? Uh, or you know, certainly they could beat me to it and say, hey, I'm having a trouble, I'm having trouble with this medicine, versus waiting until the next visit to say, hey, yeah, I, I stopped that medicine because I was having trouble. We can troubleshoot much sooner. Or you know, in the instances that we're checking blood sugars, instead of waiting till that next visit and bringing me all these blood sugars and then making a change to our regimen, we could do that much more quickly. We could check sugars, you can let me know in a few days and a week, and we could change our regimen much more quickly and get to goal much more quickly. So I think being able to communicate more closely, more quickly, we'll just, we'll get there faster. And it's just, it's just better. So I think it works better for you. Uh, it works better for me and I sleep better knowing that you're doing better and I don't have to worry about you having blood sugar problems. Um, so overall, I think it's just a better system in that regard.